To ask Allah for a good ending is to live a good life and it's to seek a good beginning of the afterlife. The believer doesn't necessarily focus on the realm that they're currently in. They worry about the relationship they have with the creator of all realms. So he seeks a way in it and out of it that is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But that request for a good ending has to be sincere and truthful. And it has to speak to the way that you actually live your life. The Prophet sallallahu told a man who was very specific about how he wanted to die shaheed, be truthful with Allah and he will be truthful with you. And we know how Umar عنه, was so specific when he asked Allah not just to die shaheed, but to die shaheed in Medina, which didn't seem likely at the time. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it so that he would be stabbed while leading salah in the masjid of the Prophet وسلم, in Medina. And these are not just distant stories of the past. Sheikh Kishk rahimahullah, who was a famous preacher in Egypt, he used to always make this dua from the minbar, from the pulpit. Allahumma ahyini imama wa amitni imama wa hshurni wa ana sajidun bayna yadayka ya rabbil alameen. Oh Allah, allow me to live as an imam. Allow me to die as an imam and resurrect me while I'm making sujood, prostrating to you. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted him death in his sujood on a Friday. Imagine being resurrected in sajda, or imagine being raised up on the day of judgment, saying words of dhikr, words of remembrance. And there was this man who was doing hajj with the Prophet Sallallahu and he fell off of his riding animal and died while he was doing the talbiyah, while he was saying, labbaik Allahumma labbaik, here I come, O oh Allah, here I come. And the Prophet Sallallahu said, leave him in his ihram, he will be raised on the day of judgment saying, labbaik Allahumma labbaik, here I come, O oh Allah, here I come. So the deed you die upon is the deed you're going to be raised with. And that deed should be a prominent feature of your life. Live the way you want to die. Accompany here who you want to accompany there. Build the home you want to live in there while you're still here. And your very last moments here are your first moments there. ونفخ في الصور فصاعق من في السماوات ومن في الأرض إلا من شاء الله ثم نفخ فيه أخرى فإذا هم قيام ينظرون. The trumpet will be blown and all those in the heavens and all those on the earth will fall dead except those Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chooses to spare. And then it will be blown again and they will rise up again staring in anticipation. The horn blows on the day of judgment and we're doing and saying exactly what we were when we died. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لا يحزنهم الفزع الأكبر وتتلقاهم الملائكة هذا يومكم الذي كنتم توعدون. The great shock is not going to frighten the believers. And the angels will greet them saying to them, this is your day which you have been promised. The same words that were said to you in the grave, your day that you have been promised. Now, how soon do you meet your deeds in this realm? The Prophet ﷺ said, when your grave is open, as soon as you look up, you see this bright man and he's reaching out to you and he says, Hal ta'rifuni? Do you know who I am? You say, I don't know who you are. I don't recognize you. And he says, Ana sahibuka al-Qur'an, alladhi azma'tu naharaka fil hawajir, wa sartu laylak. I am your companion, the Qur'an, the one who used to keep you thirsty during the day and awake at night. وَإِنَّ كُلَّ تَاجِرٍ مِنْ وَرَاءِ تِجَارَتِهِ وَإِنَّكَ الْيَوْمَ مِنْ وَرَاءِ كُلِّ تجارة. Everyone is out there seeking the profit of their trade. And you are beyond every trade, meaning you've already got everything that everyone could want. فَيُعْطَ الْمُلْكَ بِيَمِينِهِ وَالْخُلْدَ بِشِمَالِهِ And so the dominion is placed in your right hand and eternal life is placed in your left. وَيُوضَعُ عَلَى رَأْسِهِ تَاجُ الْوَقَارِ and he has a crown of nobility placed on his head. SubhanAllah. This is as soon as you're getting out the grave. Now we'll come back to the rest of this because this is only the beginning for the companion of the Quran. Allah then says, وَجَاءَتْ كُلُّ نَفْسٍ مَعَهَا سَائِقٌ وَشَهِيد And then everyone comes forth and there's an angel that is taking you to your place and another angel with your records that is walking alongside you. And everyone is going to proceed differently to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the gathering. You shall be gathered walking, the Prophet said, 
And the Prophet ﷺ said, Rukbanan, riding, and he says, وَتُجَرُّونَ عَلَى وُجُوهِكُمْ Some of you will be dragged upon your faces. As for those that are riding, the Prophet ﷺ said, some of them are multiple people on one animal. So you have two, three, four, up to 10 on an animal. And then you have some people that are noble enough that they have their own animal to ride. And they're not all moving at the same speed or pace. They're not all the same animal. And the Prophet ﷺ is telling us that it's in accordance with your righteousness. The speed is in accordance with how fast you were to the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and your good deeds in this life. As for those that are walking on their faces, the companions asked the Prophet ﷺ, how is that even possible? You know, you think about the scene of people walking on their faces. And the Prophet ﷺ said, isn't the one who made him walk on his feet in this world able to make him walk on his face in the next? It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who decides what you walk on or how you walk. Then the Prophet ﷺ says, the people are gathered on the day of resurrection on this reddish white land, like a pure loaf of bread, meaning that this land has no landmarks to guide them and it has no trees or anything to shade them. Then everyone is gathered, naked, barefoot and uncircumcised, the way that they were born. And everyone only has their place in that gathering. And Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, she asked the Prophet sallallahu aren't people going to be looking at each other? And he said to Aisha radiallahu anha, al-amru ashaddu min dhalik, li kulli imri'in minhum sha'nun yughni, that everyone is too concerned with their affair to be thinking about what other people are wearing or not wearing. Everyone's focused on the matter at hand, the day of judgment. It's that severe for people that they can't even notice their nakedness. And then the Prophet ﷺ said, the sun is brought so near that you could reach out and touch the sun. فَيَكُونُونَ فِي الْعَرَقِ بِقَدْرِ أَعْمَالِهِمْ And so everyone will be in their sweat in accordance with their deeds. Amongst them, the Prophet ﷺ said, are those that will be covered up to their ankles. And then amongst them are those who will be covered up to their knees. And amongst them are those who will be covered up to their waist. And amongst them are those, the Prophet ﷺ said, who will be drowning in their sweat, subhanAllah. Now at this point, there are people who are also being consumed by the land. And that's tied to a very specific sin, the sin of wrongfully taking the land of someone else in this world. The Prophet ﷺ said, those people will literally sink down the seven layers of land on the Day of Judgment. And then there is this one who is burdened by the property that they didn't pay zakat on. And the Prophet ﷺ said that that property is heated and placed on their body. And then there is the unlawfully consumed wealth. And that also is a burden on the person on the Day of Judgment. So you're being weighed down by your sins of confiscation and you are drowning in your sins of disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The opposite of that is the person who voluntarily gave of their wealth and property extra for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And for that person, not only are they not sinking or boiling, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts shade over them from the sun. The Prophet ﷺ said, That everyone is under the shade of their charity until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala judges between the people. Now this is not referencing the shade of the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but it's the shade of your spending for his sake. Only a select few have the shade of his throne subhanahu wa ta'ala, but every believer has the shade of their charity and hopefully not the sinking of their theft that we see in the previous situation. So as you're standing there on that day, you have the Quran as your companion, you have your charity as your shade, and now you await the arrival of your Lord and the next stage of that day that is equivalent to 50,000 years.